Hey everybody, how's it going? In this episode, I want to be going over one of the next big things that we're going to need to automate the deployment of our home lab setup, and that is Ansible. So if you've never used Ansible before, basically it is software that is used for provisioning servers. This means that it can be used to install and configure all kinds of software automatically. The big thing with Ansible is that it is agentless, meaning that you don't need any software installed on the actual client machine in order to use it. Ansible is run all via SSH, so as long as there's an SSH server on the client machine, you can use Ansible to provision it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the new Packer configuration file that I made to set up an Apache web server on a Ubuntu 18 base image. So basically the idea of this home lab setup is that you would run this Ubuntu base uh, Packer file and build the base image. And from that base image, you would run this new Ubuntu 18 apache.json file with Packer in order to build an Apache server from that base image. So there's a couple differences between our base image that we built in the last episode and this new one. So you'll notice that the first big thing is the type of builder that this is. So the last one was a VirtualBox ISO, and this one is a VirtualBox OBF. This means instead of building the actual image from an ISO file, it's gonna build it from an existing OBF. So our source path is going to be our Ubuntu 18 base OBF. So it's going to import that OBF file and then do, make some changes to that OBF and export it into a new output directory. The big change here is that instead of making the NAT network interface added from the base image, I decided to change that to something that's done after the installation of the entire uh, actual Apache server or whatever server, whatever service we're gonna be setting up at that time. So right now in the base, uh, in the actual base image file, there's no changes to the network modification. And that is only gonna take place after all the provisioning is done. And the next big thing that, that you're gonna see that's different here is we specify a provisioner as well as a builder. So the type of provisioner that we're gonna be using is Ansible, as we talked about earlier. Now the thing about Ansible is it does not run on Windows machines, which I'm currently running. But Packer has a solution for this, and that is using Ansible Local. What Ansible Local is going to do is actually run Ansible locally on the client machine instead of running it from our Windows machine and SSHing into the client that we're building. Now, the only prerequisite for this is that Ansible is installed on the client machine. But if you remember from the previous episode, we did put Ansible into our pre-seed file to include it upon installation. The playbook directory is the directory that's going to be uploaded to the client to serve all the different content needed for the playbook to run. And then we specify the playbook file that we want to actually run on the client. In this case, it's going to be in our Ansible directory under Ubuntu web server.yaml. So if we go back to our Packer directory, we'll see there's now an Ansible directory within there, which contains all the things that we need for Ansible. The one thing that we have in here is our Ubuntu web server.yaml. That's going to be our playbook file for our Ubuntu web server. So if we take a look at this, it's actually very simple uh, what's inside. There's not much to it. We specify the host. This, requ this is required in an Ansible playbook. Uh, we're just going to say the host is all. Right now, that's only going to be localhost because we didn't make any changes to the default configuration. Uh, become is going to be become root, and we're going to say yes because we're going to need root access to perform the changes that we need. And then we're going to specify a role that we want this web server to take on. So the role that we want is going to be Ubuntu Apache. So basically, Ansible is going to look at this host, and it's going to only be localhost, and it's going to give it the role of an Ubuntu Apache web server. So if we go into roles, we're going to see a file that matches that exact name, and that's key. So if we take a look into this Ubuntu Apache directory, we see files and tasks. Now, inside of tasks is where your main.yaml is going to be. This is the series of commands that's actually executed when you are giving a server this role. So the first thing that we do is just use the apt command to install the Apache 2 package and make sure it's at the latest state. So this is just going to use apt and install Apache. And if it's behind on versions, it's going to update it. The next thing that we do is copy the actual Apache 2 configuration file into place. This Apache 2 conf is actually stored locally in our files directory. And I'll show you that after. And then we copy it into the clients directory of Etsy Apache 2, Apache 2 comp. That's where the Apache 2 configuration file lives. So basically we are overwriting the existing configuration file with our own custom one. 
After that, we're going to copy the Apache index file into place. This works very similar to the step four, where we specify the source as index.html and the destination as var www.html. Now this is the default directory root, sorry, the default web root. So that's where we're gonna put our index file into place. And the last thing that we do is use the systemd command in Ansible to restart Apache. So we give it the name Apache2. We say the state that we want it to be in is restarted. And enabled on boot, we're gonna set to true. Now, some of this syntax might seem a little unfamiliar if you haven't used Ansible, but luckily they have some of the greatest documentation I've ever seen written. So for example, here's a page of the copy command for the documentation. So they give you the actual command name and they give you a quick synopsis of how it's used, all the different parameters that you can use, uh, the different choices that you can put into them. But the big thing that's been extremely helpful to me, especially when I was learning Ansible, is that they give you examples. And not just one or two examples, but basically examples for every kind of use case you could think to use the command for. I mean, there's this is a lot of examples to specify just for a copy command. So if you're unfamiliar with Ansible, I would definitely recommend taking a look at their documentation as it's super helpful. All right, so I also mentioned that we have some local files that we're gonna be copying into place. So if we go back, we are in our Ubuntu Apache role directory, and we also have a files directory within here. Now here lives our Apache 2 conf and our index file, and this is what actually is gonna be used to copy into place on our client machine. So I'm gonna go back to the Packer directory, and the whole idea behind this is that we're going to run the Ubuntu 18 base Packer file in order to build our base image, which is in this directory, I already have that built. And then we would run this um, Ubuntu 18 Apache file for Packer, which would take the OBF file from the base, make some slight changes to it, and then give us the output as a new OBF file with the Apache web server installed. Now Apache is something that's relatively simple to install and configure, but this is we're gonna be using this to build upon bigger services later down the line. So I just wanted to make sure to explain the full concept of why I'm doing it this way. This also gives you the ability to make one Ubuntu 18 Apache web server OVF file and then import that multiple times. So say you, for some reason you want 10 web servers set up in your home lab, well you can just build this, you can just build it once and then import it 10 times and put them all in there. So to actually run this, we're just gonna go back and use the command line and use Packer to do it. So we're just gonna CD to where we have the Packer directory. And then you'll see that we have our uh, Ubuntu 18 Apache.json. So we just do packer.exe build and then Ubuntu 18 Apache.json. Now this is gonna go ahead and build the actual OVF file that we need. It's going to use the builder to import the base OVF and it's gonna use Ansible to provision it. And then it should make our network interface change to put it on our NAT network and then export it as an OVF. So I'll cut to when this is done and then I'll get back to you. All right, and now that that is finished, we can take a look at some of the output here. Now, the big difference is going to be all of this verbose output here, and that's from Ansible. So we can see that it went ahead and ran the playbook, and the tasks that are outputted here, each all this text, each one of these lines is actually the name of the task that we specified for the, our Apache Ubuntu playbook. Now, at the end, you can see that five things are turned as okay, and nothing failed. So it looks like everything worked. Now the format is a little messed up for the Windows command prompt from Ansible, uh, but there's nothing I can really do about that. And at the end, you can see it did do our modify VM changes and change our NAT network adapter just like we wanted it to. And it says that our output directory should be Ubuntu 18 Apache. So if we look in here, we're going to have the OBF files for our new Ubuntu 18 Apache web server. So if we go into VirtualBox, we can um, do file, import appliance, and then navigate to the directory where all of this is stored. And we should be able to import this with no problem. So go ahead and hit next. Uh, an important thing to note is that since we're using one base image, everything will have the same MAC address unless you check this box that says reinitialize the MAC address of all network cards. So make sure to do that or else there's gonna be some issues because you're gonna have machines with the same IP and the same MAC address on the same network. So we'll go ahead and, and, we'll go ahead and press import. This will take just a few seconds, but after this is done, we should have a virtual machine that's running Ubuntu 18.04 with Apache already installed 
and with the configuration files and index file that we put into place. All right, now that that is done, we can go ahead and fire up our new Ubuntu 18 Apache image. All right, perfect. And it brings us to this login prompt. So we can go ahead and log in with the default credentials of Conda as a username and Conda as a password. Now, the next thing I'm just going to uh, sudo apt install curl. So we can go ahead and curl localhost to see if our custom index page is in place. Yeah, if our custom index page is in place, we should get our custom text. If not, then we should just get the default uh, Apache landing page, which is going to be just a massive wall of text, especially if we're just in the terminal. So if we go ahead and do curl localhost, perfect. We have our custom index file, and we can verify that by going to, uh, if we do cd var www.html, take a look at this index file. We can see that that is indeed our custom index file. So that's how we're going to be using Ansible to do most of the work for our home lab setup provisioning wise. Um, this is going to be extremely useful when you go to set up more complex services and things that have a lot more steps to them. And it's going to be great for being able to customize different operating systems and stuff at home. It would be much easier than setting it up by hand. Now I think off camera I'm going to do some more customizations like adding different base operating systems and adding support for, you know, say if I add a CentOS 7 base image you know, adding Apache support for CentOS 7, but I don't want to put all that on camera. I think it'd be boring to cover the same things multiple times. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. I'll be posting updates as I update the GitHub repo.